Are you serious? Hello, welcome to How to Kill an Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy. Before we crack on with today's show, we've got a great guest in I can't wait to introduce you to. I just want to say congratulations to our competition winner, Alexander Walker, who has won himself a Steelbook special edition copy of Just Cause. The latest uh, edition of the Just Cause franchise has come out. And yeah, that's going to make its way to you. If you want to get involved in more competitions and such, all you have to do is head to howtokillanhour.com forward slash news and you can join our mailing list and we'll We'll let you know when we're giving away more cool stuff. Now, today's show, um, I'm very happy and I'd like a, a round of applause from myself and you, Billy, for Mr. John Benny in the building today. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, Woo! gosh. Right, no, the, the, most, the most flattered. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming down and joining us on the show. Um, obviously, you're you're very well known for the Gadget Show. Um, how, how's things going with that at the moment? Are you, are you in between shooting? Are you shooting or not at the moment? Uh, well, we, we're starting, just started last week shooting for the series that's coming back in April, which is either Series 31 or Series 29, depending on whether you count the World Tour or not, So, which is an awful lot of programmes, actually, one way or another. I don't think there's any sh- many any show out there that I know that's been running for Ooh. thirty plus seasons Ooh, that isn't, isn't like a uh, a soap. Ah, well, Top Gear, for it, I suppose. Oh one. yeah, well, there you they, go. Um, they would. Funny you should say that though, because you are you do come from a car background, don't you? You are a petrol head, a, a car well, fanatic. I've been fortunate enough only to work with my childhood interests, basically. Um, yeah. uh, so uh, a car, which c- cars and technology, and probably a few other things as well. But I've certainly got around to working with those, and I used to used to do the car program uh, Top Gear many years ago. You know, in the, the, the dim mists of history. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, did you? Is it true you worked at Ford? Was that I did work jobs? at Ford. My first job after college was at Ford. I did. I and it was actually pretty dull though, unfortunately. And I, I expected it to be all involving lots of cars on a day-to-day basis it wasn't really I just came up with a lot of figures um, and worked in finance and product planning I think it was and we, did, we I sort of counted the number of windscreen wipers required for various <laughs> uh, various cars in various places and, and things like that it, it was good but you never really saw a car so that's why I applied for the job on Top Gear and got it being a researcher Right so you started off as a researcher on, on Top yeah. Gear and, and what was it like that because this was the Top Gear of old not the Top Gear that, that we currently have this was no. a, a very early version of Top it Gear was, no, no, what was it like? Oh well I, it, it was oh, it was good, it was good fun because it was with cars right from the start and it was it was just so much more fun working in the media than for Fords um, and I <laughs> wanted I just I mean I set out uh, I, I did criticise it quite a bit when I went for interview and uh, I, I, I wanted it to be like the then car magazine on telly in the sense to be more critical more humorous than, than than just the very straight show it was perhaps when I when I joined it and uh, I, over the years I gradually got in a position to make it make it more like that but it was always from my point I didn't manage to make the break then to make it into being an entertainment show which is what Jeremy Andy did magnificently in the early 2000s yeah because yeah. I reckon when people say Top Gear to me I, I think of it less of a car show but an entertainment show mm. that just cars are the excuse the pun vehicle for moving yep. for moving Moving things forward, right? So as that happened, um, and even like you said, that kind of happened after you on the show. Were you were you quite happy to see that happen? I was you? brilliant. I think it was fantastic. Yeah, think, and and because um, we'd often talked about doing it in the studio, and but they actually got round to, to doing it and getting and getting it all together. And but it was it was almost because I think it was almost on the point of going away. I think and uh, um, the, the control of the BBC as well. He got to reinvent it, and brought Jeremy back, who'd left it, and um, and they reinvented it brilliantly. Great Absolutely. stuff. Yep. Great stuff. Mm. And and are you still into cars quite a bit then i'm still i'm yes yes i am i mean, I, I, I mean last year i was writing a book about them for the future of the car which uh, which is uh, it was a foolish thing to say yes to doing because uh, the time scale of books and this time scale of the future <laughs> don't necessarily fit together terribly well but nevertheless it enabled me to find out quite a bit uh, okay. about about where they might be going yes so future of the car part one is probably what you're writing because i think yes. it's going to be an ongoing series isn't it really yeah what is it i mean the good thing is that they are changing yeah. in, in in a way in more rapidly than they had been doing in, in the 90s and the, the early 2000s where basically they just got heavier and safer and more got more kit in them but they hadn't really changed very much but now there's I think the, a lot of the changes are overstated in the sense that we won't be actually be entirely electric powered and entirely autonomous by whatever year somebody's plucking off the shelf um, yeah. uh, today. But uh, it, it, there are nevertheless massive changes around in in, tra- in cars and transport, which is great fun. Yeah, I mean, we, we're very interested in how technology in cars is just going to help the everyday use for us because i know there's like loads of really cool features and stuff but we're kind of thinking how is the how is the electric vehicle going to integrate into everyday life and i think the next key change is going to be the actual everyday car that that gets presented to us where we're like oh i I can actually just take this and maybe drive it around all week and charge it up at the end of the week how close are we to kind of that real 
easy and affordable consumer car do you reckon guess I, why I don't know whether electricity really is going to be the answer or whether, yeah. whether whether there might just be an electric phase and then a hydrogen phase after that or something else probably won't be compressed air or nuclear or anything like that but it was certainly I, th- I think I think longer term hydrogen because there are a number of problems with, with batteries in cars they're very heavy at the moment unless there's another revolution just around the corner which there isn't yet it doesn't appear um, and uh, they make makes electric cars really suitable for short journeys around town yeah. for example but once you start still there's that issue of the long journey could you could I drive from Birmingham to London and back again in anything much in a very expensive Tesla yes anything else probably not yeah and and, and then you and is there going to be is there going to be a charging point where, where you get to is it going to be free and then there's the matter of charging point etiquette so you leave it charging it's already charged people are going to come and get really cross with you and, yeah. and pull your windscreen wipers off <laughs> if, if, you're, if you've left it there charging for hours you're taking the space and things like that Ooh. exactly I mean I Same get annoyed before. when my phone's charging and somebody unplugs it and starts charging their phone I'm like hang on I'm only at 80% I'm not 100% yet so there's all sorts mm. of like drama that can be caused around sort of <laughs> I can imagine two people fighting over a charger for their car. But I think for lots of driving, I think electric cars work really well. And yeah. also we're getting to that, the, the whole point is that electricity is everywhere. And actually it is already everywhere now. So it's not a question of building another infrastructure of any sort. It's just a question of making it available so that when, wherever you stop, wherever you park, you get used to plugging it in. And there, yeah. that means whenever you come back to your car, it's going to be charged. That's the sort of idea where it will almost work for maybe 60 or 70 percent of the of, of drivers. So you reckon when we get to the point where it's kind of of like you know you, I mean I reckon when you came into the building if you needed a USB if you need to plug a USB lead in for anything you kind of know you're going to find one and is it that kind of feeling that you reckon we need to get to that kind of balance of number yes. of access to chargers yes I think so and where it means that even if you park at the zoo or if you go visit the zoo or yeah. you go to the cinema you, you expect there to be a charger there so you'll automatically be charging your car up and they'll yeah. probably throw in the power because they want you to go to your um, that that cinema or that, that attraction you know that would actually be a good sell you know fr- free charge while you watch the film i'll tell you that yeah that'd mm. be wicked um so what else have you kind of been learning while you've been writing this book because this is a really interesting area mm, it's good it's good it's a good topic one, one thing i'm reassured by is that old cars i think have a great future good good because i think um almost if if everybody isn't using petrol anymore if everybody isn't um it's almost like film like the parallel with film photography because back in the 80s and 90s people used to talk about it's, it's terrible we're going to run out of silver and when you're not going to be able to take photographs anymore and then along came digital photography all of us all of a sudden that became um, an enthusiastic minority niche and you don't have to worry about that anymore there's plenty of silver to go around and i think it'll be the same with with old cars you, you won't have to worry so much about causing pollution with them say or you won't have to worry about whether there's enough petrol to drive them or simply because you'll be in a small enthusiastic minority definitely yeah I mean uh, it is in- interesting I've got a friend that told me that he's got a film camera and he whipped it out and it was like talk of the, talk of the room when he took it out people were like what's that he's like well you know it's a you know, Pentax da, 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 da. and everyone was like oh yeah check that out mm. it's, uh, it's interesting so I could imagine somebody pulling up with a smoky you know <laughs> car with like banging uh, banging smoke coming out the rear of it and everyone going oh look at that isn't that nice instead of now everyone mm. kind of shunning mm. a petrol car is there a classic car that you'd like to drive once in a while or you something oh I, like, I, I think I'd want I think the answer is a whole you need a whole fleet of cars really you need you need a car you you, you need a car for every every occasion i mean you need your sort of rolls royce to take on picnics you need oh, yeah. to i mean even when I, whenever i look at old pictures of i want to drive everything that's on it in an ideal world you would have a huge hangar just full of all cars maintained in perfect condition so if you fancied driving an aston db4 you could take that have you found it a ferrari but also if you wanted to sort of experience uh i don't know a 1971 ford cortina you could do that as well Whew. that the, the, the reality might you might not like it i don't <laughs> no, no, no. That's because a lot of maintenance. I'd, I need to save a lot to have that hanger, no, and d- also yeah. I've got a guy that got a guy to keep it nice and spit shine and polished. What do you drive yourself? Uh, for me at the moment, I drive a range of cars actually because oh, I'm quite lucky because technology is moving into cars. Um, mm. It's quite interesting here at How to Kill an Hour. We kind of that world is colliding with us. So yes. recently, um, I've actually been a, a Toyota GT86, actually, oh, which well, isn't a very techie car. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very it's, tactile car. It's very tactile car. Mm. I feel like it's very... Um, uh, welcome to How to Kill an Hour, the car show, by the way. Uh, I feel like it's a motor vehicle. Like, when I got in it, I didn't feel like I was in a spaceship. You know, certain cars you get in, it's got, you know, touchscreen here, it's got lights over here, you know, you can adjust the seats and stuff. I reckon you get in it, and when you put your foot down and you just hear the grumble of the engine, mm. I just feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm here to go for a nice drive in this. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's yeah. good. Well, that's, it's a that's lovely it. sound. Um, we got the, we're in the blue edition as well, which uh, mm. had a nice sports pack on it. Um, great drive. Great drive. Why, why don't they put CarPlay in there and Android Auto, which is one of, Toyota seem to be resisting that. Yeah, it's, 
it's really interesting. It's kind of got this halfway car play. So you, you plug your phone it's got in. It's got its own thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you plug your phone in and, and you get a bit of display. But CarPlay needs to go in every car, I reckon, because it's, so. it's a great concept and it just works. Do you think it's because they want to own your data? Do you think it's because it, Toyota want to know where you've been so they can sell something to you? Or, or maybe they're just worried about something else. I don't know. I it may be that or it may be the cost of having CarPlay in a vehicle. We don't know the licensing kind of, cost exactly. We don't know the deal that Apple are brokering, but we do know that they have th- some of the most popular handsets in the world. And if you put CarPlay in your car, you're not going to put off customers. Do you know? Mm. Do you know what I mean? So may, maybe the, the deal with licensing, uh, Apple are saying, "Hey, you got to give us a good piece of the car that, that you're selling for that." So yeah, but, it's but, an interesting conversation. But they could give you the option of paying for it as the customer, though, couldn't they? Yeah, uh, actually, <laughs> therefore. <laughs> <laughs> is that, yeah. I think there's uh, yeah because in some ways it's very advanced I mean they're plugging the hydrogen thing yeah. very uh, I mean I think there's sort of a long way to go to, uh, probably GT86 accepted probably to, of actually getting more feel and more excitement into the cars I mean the traditional criticism of for them from the Corolla onwards isn't it well, they're bringing back the Corolla name apparently later oh, this yeah. year oh yeah they love retro so that's coming back that's going to oh, be that's mm. going to gonna hit mm. hard I reckon yeah mm. definitely uh, mm. other than that we've been in a few other vehicles I'm not quite allowed to talk, talk to you about them. a couple of concept cars but oh, I think exciting. here we're going to yeah. be kind of investigating how I just want to know about the real feasibility of having electric cars or hydrogen based cars cars that only expel water right they, they do, yes right? it dribbles out I went to drive in a Toyota Mirai and that, that all it just sort of it, it, yes it, it dribbles water at the end of the journey really <laughs> yes I've got, got the video of it here okay, well, cool. yeah, yeah, well no I'll, 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 I'll never find it <laughs> <laughs> so, so is it yeah. when, you, when you finish driving it just yeah. goes for a wee yes hmm <laughs> interesting uh you also mentioned photography as well um Mm. you i feel like in the gadget show everybody kind of has their their thing that they do i feel like georgie she kind of gets thrown out there to social to to facebook and those trips Mm. uh otis kind of gets the the life scared out of him in whatever way possible he's always got to break a world record Mm. i feel like for you photography is 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 one of the things one of the things I'm interested, on, yeah. I'm interested yes I used to do a bit of that as a, as a child as well obviously many many years ago and yeah, I, yeah, I sort yeah. of become a bit of a born again actually I became a bit of a born again photographer when I started writing car articles for newspapers and the first thing they asked was what what have you got any pictures to go with it so yeah. I had to go down that was early 2000s it was just the sort of cusp of uh, uh, film to digital so if you were doing an article for the evening standard they would want it on digital if you wanted to do one for a magazine like Top Gear magazine they wanted it wanted a transparency okay. so I had to go and buy a scanner which I've still got although oh. they're made, it's actually amazing it's still working it's very uh, but, uh, so you'd take the film get it processed and then scan it in and email it off for uh, for the for the paper that was that that was uh, when that was changing yeah two thousand two gosh that sounds foreign I don't think people would even you know like young journalists would even be aware of that now, no, yeah. you'd have to go through that well I, oh, and then before that I suppose all those people uh, loading films in bags and processing yeah. them in bags at football matches and yeah. things, and things. Crazy. Uh, yes. Mm. Yeah. So what? I mean, yes, what should go to at the moment? Do you, do you have a film camera still and a digital camera? You I, 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 just... I, I, I did, uh, what do I? What do I have currently? I, uh, yes, I've still got uh, a Sony A six thousand. Is a small compact thing I carry around quite a lot. Sure. Uh, currently, I've, I've got still got some old film Nikon cameras. Got uh, Nikon digital cameras as well. I was quite taken by their new. Uh, Z7. That was the mirrorless. Mirrorless is very useful, I think. Yeah. Not, I mean, we can get we can get seduced by the idea of a, an optical image in a mm. viewfinder, but um, but electronic viewfinders are so good, especially when it gets darker, especially when you want to review the pictures in your viewfinder. And as you get older, as I find, <laughs> <laughs> find you need to put on your reading glasses to see the screen at the back. So yeah. So that's really useful. Mm. I mean, one of the things I like about mirrorless cameras is just mm. the fact that the form factor is smaller because they just can make the, a the body bit. a little bit smaller. It's a little bit. It's only yeah. a little bit because the lenses still need to be as big. Yeah, yeah. Which, so, um, I don't know. I mean, micro four thirds is very useful, isn't it? And I, I did have this notion that sensors would gradually, really would get smaller. So the people go out and do motorsport and take no motorsports problem because then you get the fence in the way and then you get too much depth of field so that and that increases with the micro four thirds so that's less less useful but uh, uh, it would c- certainly in terms of because the, the weight of the lens goes down with the smaller sensor size mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. indeed indeed I mean we you, you re- I mean look John really knows this do I I don't know I do, yeah, I do. <laughs> fire, firing off um, mm. all sorts there but um, 
with regards to photography, do you think that digitization of, of, of photography and the fact that it's so much more accessible is a good thing that people can just kind of, any anyone can kind of pick up a camera now. You don't kind of have to have £2,000 to get, you know, enormous lens and a great camera body. Uh, upwards, yes, so. to a degree, although I'm not, I'm, I'm actually not quite so sure it's been that democratization that one might imagine because, <laughs> because, um, because actually people still want a lot of expensive stuff, don't they, to do things, to do it properly. And um to some extent, with lights and cameras and lenses and things, people are demanding more. I think they're demanding yeah. actually higher resolution, higher sensors, and bigger lenses. It all, if anything, I think the gap between what you might go and what the what you might use as just a casually interested punter and what the professional photographer is doing has actually got bigger. I really? Because I because when if you bought a copy of Car Magazine in the seventies, it would all be shot on thirty five millimeter SLRs with film that you could actually probably go and buy. And I did buy one with saving from my holiday job and it, but I got more or less the same bit of kit that they were taking the pictures of the Ferraris on car magazine whereas now I don't I think I think there's more differentiating you want people there's and because and maybe because there are more people doing it I suspect you need so or is it just because standards have risen in a healthy way and things become more specialised? Maybe, yeah. I, yes. mean, I mean, look at you're surrounded by lots of things. You've got the, these microphones and stands and everything. Where's that? Yeah, you know, it's got it all. eBay's a great thing. You know, got it all for a knockoff price. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I, I, you know what? That's a very good point, actually. Yeah, I mean, as, as people want to kind of specialise in stuff, I suppose mm. there is people do want to go for that premium quality. I mean, some with some things, I'm kind of like, buy it once, so you never have to buy it again. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, I feel like that with these microphones. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and there's caressing other, them yeah, tenderly. You know, caressing <laughs> yes. the, the short microphone. Uh, and then there's other things where I'm just like, just get it as cheap as possible, mate. Let's, let's ah. crack on. But with photography, I think there is a notable difference if you just try and like, you do, a very good point, if you do just get super cheap lenses, there are a couple of bargains out there when it comes to lenses, I reckon. Mm. But um, I reckon when you, you can tell the def- difference when someone's spe- spend some money on their glass and they've got a really mm. good lens like we've got a friend of the show called he's called Canon John mm. his name's John and he, he loves Canon cameras obviously and he gets to use some serious you know like the lenses like like uh, sports lenses like the big telephoto lenses he gets mm. the ones that are the size of your arm this is John stuff. Devo is it yeah, that's it yeah, yeah John Devo right. yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, exactly. he makes it John oh, okay. oh, right. yes I'll do it yes oh, I'll do it oh, yes, oh, yeah, yeah. so, um, yes. so I'm sure you've seen his photography on the oh he's brilliant yeah yeah, yeah he's mm. really really good so yeah some of the lenses that he gets his hands on like they're enormous they're they're they um but they're super specialized i guess though right um mm. what are your thoughts on on camera phone photography well, it's great isn't it I mean, yeah. that, and, and um and it's good that we're now getting three lenses rather than two on the backs of back backs of cameras it could only get only it only seems to get better and also i think one of the most interesting things is they're almost doing some things now better camera phones than real cameras because they're harnessing the computational processing power of the phone yeah. in amazing ways. So you can actually get pictures. With, I, I think it almost will get to the stage that you have these very serious frogs may have to have their Canon 5 DSR or whatever it is and in and also have a camera phone for certain shots that you can only get the shots on the phone because you can only get, say, that depth of field in that light uh, with something that takes 30 pictures and combines all the things together before spewing out its final image. 100%. I mean, mm. I love some of the in-camera stuff that that, that happens like on, on the software. Like The fact you can just point you know, a camera uh, image that's got a really bright sun in it and then a bit mm. of shade over there and a couple of phases and it kind of pulls it all together and makes it look great that's phenomenal that saves you hours in photoshop mm, um mm. i've popped stuff up put a filter on it and people have dm'd me going oh what, ca- what camera did you use there i'm like oh, pix- pixel 2 pixel you know two, I mean? the, the, the pixels large arguably had, well certainly was last time i tried them out all certainly ahead of that particular computational game i think yeah i think mm. when it comes to camera phones the pixel and the p20 the p20 is also is, yes yeah. it's also yeah oh, oh, it's, mm. if you say p20 to him it'll go off mm. on for like 30 minutes but rightly so it's, it's, it's a, a very very good camera uh what are your kind of thoughts on the future of 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 smartphone cameras then because you made an interesting point lenses kind of are the thing that that did dslrs have that kind of that's what they have that gives them focus opt- optical mm. zoom and stuff like mm. that um but an iphone doesn't have a lens on it so that kind of can hold it back or a smartphone do, do you think maybe in the future we could see some sort of hybrid you know lenses for phones and stuff well, that, 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 i mean there have been haven't there? Yeah. Been samsung and, 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 and a few other things i'm trying to remember the various ones over the years have tried to be a bit more and be a bit more towards the camera end of it but on the other hand i don't 
think it's ever quite worked as because it's extra bulk and nobody really and, and also those adapters i've always been rather disappointed by mm. you for iphones and things they they've never really delivered on the on the promise i, I found yeah so uh, hmm i don't know I, I think it'll be needing something that's all within its little box Right. So I'm conscious of your squeaking chair here. Oh, that's all right. Squeak <laughs> away. That's fine. That's fine. As long as, I don't think, as long as I don't think you're breaking wind, which I do sometimes on a show. But it's right. all right. I've not had any beans last night, so we're all good. Oh, um, so, <laughs> so the gadget show. Yeah. Uh, like you said, series 29 or 31, depending on how you count it. Um, what's been fun for you on the last, the previous season, the current season that's, that, that's out on the gadget show? What have you enjoyed? Because you guys, you've done so much. Mm. You've done so much. I mean, I did enjoy watching you try and camping. That was quite the camping. Oh right, episode. yes, that, that was, was that was quite good. I think it was last season, yes. season before that. Yeah, that, that was that, that was that was quite cold. Yes, that was, <laughs> was, was year. Um, they were. That, yes, I'm trying to think. Recently, I did. I mean, it, it, it was all very enjoyable. I did, some of the highlights over the years. There were a few. I mean, I did a 24 hour race at Silverstone. I have to remember that. Oh, and yeah. I thought, and I, I, thought, I, thought that that. Was, I thought yeah. that was going to be terrible because I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not a very gamey sort of person in life generally. Which is, I don't say that. I mean, it, it was probably a, some Thing I want to develop, but uh, it's going to take me a long time to get around to it. But uh, I, th- I was really not looking forward to driving on a simulator for 24 hours, albeit only in, in stage, but uh, actually just totally got into it. Yeah. And, and you really, really wanted to, it was almost 24 hours disappeared. That's great. I mean, yeah. can you talk us uh, and the listener through this from scratch, kind of how this idea came around? Because I think this was one of, that was a really interesting watch that. Ah, but it was good. It was, uh, I think it was, it was racing, it was technically, uh, theoretically, we racing against real cars on a Silverstone 24 hour race. And uh, the idea was that one would do it on a simulation and see who was quicker. I can't remember actually. I can't even remember. <laughs> it was, um, I mean, I, and uh, I, I, I was just not looking forward to it. But, uh, but, it, but, and I'd done a little bit. I think it was called R Factor. I think the game was. I don't know what's whether it's still around or not. I don't know. It's probably been sub- supplemented. It was quite a few years ago. Yeah. So, uh, and uh, uh, just very enjoyable. And uh, it was one of these chairs that moved a bit, and you had obviously the three monitors and. Um, and quite a, good, quite a bit of tactile feel through the steering as well, which is surprising. Did yeah. you knock back a few coffees that night then? No, not, no none need. at all. Uh, no pro- 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 no pro- probably some, okay, I cool. think, but, 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 not, but, not, but not a notable amount okay. of. No, right. no, no. Well, you're quite full of beans anyway, so I don't, oh. I don't reckon you need too much coffee oh, if you're trying to do an overnight. Uh. Um, so what can you tell us about the forthcoming season of the Gadget, uh, Gadget Show? What can you let us know about or give us a little winking? <laughs> oh, I'm doing a podcast ah. uh, uh, well, for the second time on the programme. The first time was in 2006. With a uh, with a laptop and a microphone, no, but this I, I've, and that's why I need to be taking notes of your oh, of, sure, of, of yeah. all your equipment. Uh, but I, I think the only I think that's is only I think inevitably it'll probably just be one episode. It won't be, it'll be only. Oh no! <laughs> but I think, but, I've, I, but I do get to drive an Alpha SZ. That's which is nice because nice, I had not because um, the owners club asked me that I wanted to drive one I said yes but why don't we do it why don't we, why don't we record it and use it for our podcast which is very nice because I had I had a t-shirt with one on and I've not driven one huh. I have driven Alphas obviously in the past but yeah. not an SZ yeah that's pretty cool so what are you going to record the podcast in in the SZ I would hope so some, some uh, and yes I've got to say cars are quite a car cabins or should we say the yeah. interiors of cars quite a good space for recording actually you know they are sound yes Yes. yes, you get a little roar engine in the background as well. Good, yes. As long as you're not trying to hold microphones at the same time. I imagine time. we can stick them on something. Yeah, I'm sure there's always something to do. So, let me get this right. Mm. There's going to be a Gadget Show podcast and one episode, you think, <laughs> in a car. <laughs> yes, well, I know that. that, was that. <laughs> um, yes, and uh, I did I did think about it. Uh, I can't remember what the other... I mean, Craig is supposed to be learning a language, but I mean, we've been there before with learning languages with apps and things and not usually terribly successfully. And Craig, the, the, mm. the, the very scouse Craig, learning a Another, like, oh, oh, that's going to be great hearing a, a Liverpudlian accent trying to learn like uh, another language. But do you know what language he's going to be trying to learn? No, please, a, please say it's Chinese. Chinese. Or <laughs> that'd be great. Mandarin, please, please, please tell me. That'd be amazing. Konnichiwa. Great. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, anything else you can tell us? I'd like to I'm squeeze what I can. What yes, like I know. To. I ought to know. But I don't think, honestly, they've decided many things yet, which is uh, slightly un. Uh, Unnerving. They, uh, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm just, I've done tests of AirPods and tests of about their rivals, which none of which I found to be quite as good. At, I don't think. But uh, what's, uh, your t- what's your take on headphones? That's quite interesting. Headphones, actually. I yeah. prefer the classics. Over the years, 
I, well, yes. I mean, because they're so they're so such good value, aren't they? All these wonderful the Sennheiser HD twenty fives, the Grado SR sixties, the uh, uh, the Bayer Dynamic DT one fifty. Those big things are perfect for He's studios. Talking, they're talking dirty to me. This is yeah. my kind of talk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, John. That's it. Billy's wearing a pair of HD twenty fives at the moment. Yeah, ah, yeah, right. Yes, excellent. Yes, I mean, yes. they, they, but these old classics. They're yeah. still they're, they're still wonderful. They're not very expensive. And they last they're, they're last for ages. Obviously, they're not blue, they're not uh, wireless. So um, in some cases, one I've got a Bowers and Wilkins wireless quite large ones and, and a very old AKG one which isn't very good um, yeah. but uh, I like headphones really so yes. you've, got, you've got a little collection then from well, the sounds of not, not much more than that though okay, unfortunately fair but enough. P- actually old, uh, in terms of light and cheap and quite old the PX100s are always very good of the original they're sort the Mark 1 they're pretty good let's geek out on headphones feel mm. free to press the four what? 15 seconds on the podcast <laughs> what, 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 what are your favourites on there you've probably got something much more much more high tech and expensive do you know what the, the Sennheiser HD25s mm. I love because they're modular headphones which mm. means I've never had to... I've bought another pair of them. I'll explain why in a moment. Mm. But once you buy a pair, technically, you never really have to buy another pair. Like the handle and the spade. Exactly. Yeah. Ex- exactly that. So uh, I've had leads go on them. I've had capsules break on them. And, and then you can just fix those. And I, I DJed quite a lot. Mm. So... There's a lot of wear and tear on headphones. You have the coily, you have the coily lead. You get the coily lead. lead that's mm. it. You get the straight lead. Uh, you get different coloured pads as yes, well. Yes, I had the suede ones as well. <laughs> so, you know, it's quite nice on the ears. So you could um, pretty much change any part of the headphone for fun or when it breaks because headphones really, like mm. that wear and tear of putting on your shoulders, leaning on mm. it, you know, wiggy, wiggy, all that stuff. That, that kind of um, breaks the headphones, right? Uh, so I love them. And I had to get a new pair because someone nicked them. And that just proves they're really good headphones. I think I yes. left them in a DJ booth for a couple of hours, came back, they were gone. But uh, that's you, what the DJ game's like. Have you been tempted at all by the HD26? Uh, should we go? Should we do it? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. Well, no, I don't know. I haven't really, I haven't really, I've only tried them briefly. I've never. Um, great frequency response. But I think for me, I'm, I'm like, if it, is, if it ain't broke, Mm. Don't they, fix they, it. They look. You know. They don't look quite as tough. They might nah, be. They might, they exactly. Might yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I think it's the it's the it's the hardware of the headphone as well. Oh, and the great frequency response as well. There, you get really good bait, uh, bottom end for a really small capsule, mm. which is hard for a, a, a small capsule to create bass, as you know. Mm. Um, or if you do not know, now you do know. Um, so yeah, that, that's my go-to headphone and my everyday walking around headphone is probably Apple. The regular wired earpods because hmm. we mix down the show for people that listen to podcasts. So ah. we mix down the show wearing those because mo- most of the time, because obviously that's what people are listening to them in. So do you know what I mean? Mm. Kind of makes sense. It's got to sound good in yes, those headphones absolutely. over yep. everything else. Yep. Uh, and for the gym, I use Powerbeats 3s. Ah, right. They stay in your ears. And again, like the tiny little headphones, but the way that they're held into your ear, get a really good bass response off them as well. You know? mm. That's the hardest thing to replicate, I think, when it comes to headphones. Yes. So yeah. yeah, how about you? I mean, what's your walking around headphone then? Uh, well, I'd, well, probably it is. Uh, I mean, I do use the Apple uh, the ear, ordinary standard earpods with the um, with the phone. Mm-hmm. But uh, one thing really still irritates because when, when I go for my walks, I can't get data, so I can't get live radio on my iPhone, which is always podcasting's where it's at. Well, John. well I do there's a lot of that, <laughs> but there's also but also also so, it, so I have to carry around in the car. I have to carry around a small portable radio with some, <laughs> with some, with some Sony <laughs> Sony earphones and. I'll, you do often find sometimes yeah. I haven't actually got the the required now adapters for. I've always found oh, I've got something yeah. I haven't got. Yeah, you need the little. I call it the umbilical cord for the iPhone. Sort of the 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 adapter that changes the uh, the the lightning to the three quarter inch. Yes, three quarter inch. 3. Which irritatingly million. has its own DAC in it. <laughs> Isn't that irritating? There's one in the phone, but they isolate the one in the phone, and I've chosen to put presumably a very similar quality yeah. one. I think in the Sounds I don't know right. whether it's, yeah. uh, but at the moment the iPhone is still sufficiently convenient to package that would still go. You still continue with it in spite of all those mm. irritations. Yeah, yeah. I what? mean, I mean, to be fair, the earpods. I think they're all right. Oh, I mean, for uh, the size, the battery power more. that you get from them, mm. they're all right. The earpods. Mm. The earpods uh, are very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Airpods, yeah mm. very good. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you may have fast forwarded a few fifteen <laughs> seconds there to get to get for us geeking out over sound there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty mm. cool. Um, so uh, yeah, we were talking about future things coming up on the gadget. I'm, Ooh, I'm yes. squeezing you, John. I know, and I'm just wondering got, uh, what, are, uh, what are you allowed to tell us. That's the no, real th- thing. No, that the problem is I don't think they've decided yet. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they're, 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 so the, the few me. <laughs> Well, that's quite interesting, actually, because we yes. spoke about this before we pressed record, and the format of the show has changed, hasn't it? And mm. you, it feels like it as a viewer, you're doing a lot 
you're recording a lot of content closer to the actual transmission yep. date than before. You'll still do key events like E3 and 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 and, and conferences and, and other key bits of stuff that you yes. record at another time. But I feel like there's a real live. There's a live. It feels live. It's closer to the time of, of gadgets coming out when you do when you review stuff on I the show. So. I, I mean, I know I know be things like OLED TVs and things yeah. and, and and stuff. I want to test those. And I don't know whether that incorporates those micro OLEDs, which I'm not quite sure what the difference is. Actually, do you know? I don't think we'll go into it. There'll be another fast forward in the 15 (laughs) seconds. Yeah, (laughs) We might might spend an episode talking about it in the future. Mm. Um, How much do you know about what the other guys are doing in the show? Are you generally surprised when they're like, oh, and, you know, Otis has been off here and Georgie's been off there? Do you kind of have an idea of what you guys are getting up to? An an idea, but maybe, maybe not as much as one should. Oh. But it's certainly by the time we get to the studio, I've got an idea. No, we haven't actually watched all and, and before, and so we can discuss that. That is good, yes. Mm. By the time they press record, you yes. definitely know what's yes. going on by the time the script's rolling. Mm. Um, I just realised uh, we we missed something on Top Gear, actually. Is it true you got a corner named after you on the track? Yes. Yes, I do have a corner on the track, yes. How does I, that feel? Oh, I, I, I feel deeply honoured. That's a by great the, privilege. <laughs> <laughs> yes that's a great great privilege yeah yes um, I think it was a yes well I, I, I think it yes yes well, I, 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 it's nice it's quite yes. interesting I, I yeah, wonder I what I the top gear is going to be like in 20 years time when everything's electrical when there's electrical vehicles well, I don't, yeah, but, but one thing Tesla's proved that electric cars can uh, can be huge fun I mean so there's no problem with that and whether they're, they're huge fun they're not very not necessarily very good at sustained lap performances which they tend to overheat because I, mean, I think what the, the great Tesla trick was to realise that you could stress all the components out two or three or four, four times what they should be because you tend to only go 0 to 60 and then don't chill you don't you, yeah. you don't go 0 to 60 and then 0 to 60 0 to 60 0 to 60 0 to 60 so you kind mm. of found a little a little a little burnout point there at the car. but you do on the track yeah so you're going to get you're going to get onto the second lap more yeah. or less did you get to go around the track a few times then the current Top Gear track, no, no. But I used to go. I've gone around old tracks yeah. in the past. I've, uh, uh, yes, I've quite enjoyed going around races. I'm not very. Good. I don't have a competition license, but I, I do. I, but uh, I, don't, I did. I, I, I one thing. I try to see various cars have surprised me on tracks. So these most surprised me. Actually, Aston Martin DB6. I, it was. Oh, a, yeah. No, you think it's going to be like a lorry, but it wasn't. Is actually. it not? No. Free life. Mm, that, was, nice. that was. That was. That was. Where was that? Cadwell. No, it wasn't Cadwell Park. It was all. A, Donning, Donnington, yeah. Anyway, okay, yeah. yeah. All right. So, mm. what do you get up to when you're outside of the gadget show and you're just being John, who's not having to look at all things new in the world of tech? Are you still quite into stuff, or do you like to have a little break, a little detox? Uh, uh, no, walking. Oh well, only, only just wandering around. There's not then, not then. Up and down, up and down. down sh- short walks in the countryside. That's, that's, that's just it. Go to the shop, get some. No, 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 no. Seriously, seriously I do. I, do. I, still, I still like going around the, uh, with with maps and doing, uh, yeah, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, okay. Which uh, so, but uh, other things, I'm not sure. The, don't, don't, not sure. I don't. I don't, I don't have any as yet many interests. I haven't actually got around to doing anything with I I, 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 I terrible at, at reading things like the FT and the Economist and things because I, I actually I've straight I think probably making sense of the world is my hobby to try and do so I think we all can relate to that <laughs> at the moment. I think <laughs> so, that's the general consensus across the UK is we're all trying to figure out what the fuck's going on here John but I mean but when artificial intelligence is good enough to deal with economics it'll be brilliant yeah and we can just chill out until Skynet takes over yeah. <laughs> and right, runs things for us uh, what, what's coming up then for John and what can we look out for then What's coming up for me? Uh, ooh, um, well, I've still got to get this book finished. So that's going to be the, once it comes back from the editor. I've done the first draft, and so right. then I'll have to re- redo that and change everything that's and changed. Change everything. Since I think it'll change everything. Yeah, so that's uh, that's going to be that plus the gadget show is going to take most of this year. I do yeah. the odd bit of scribbling as well for the amateur photographer and uh, and classic car weekly. So um, cool. and between all that. Right. That's, that's probably most of it, actually. Interesting. What go? Like, what goes into writing a book? Like, is it? Is it? How is it? Just you sit there and just have. I've never done pages. it before. Exactly. Never, yeah. and, and I think I, for me, it would seem to be uh, initially a bit of a shock that it actually you've got all these eighty thousand words or whatever to do in the next eight months. So that's ten thousand words a month. It actually, then you better, you better you better actually make sure you get something down. Does it feel like but homework? Does it feel it like uni? It, 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 like? it, it does. Yes, I don't. I don't recall working as hard as that <laughs> <laughs> at college. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. What's your technique for writing then? Do you like to find a little space, like your little corner and whatever? Uh, switch I, off. I, I love writing on the phone. It's so much more relaxing. Really? You can actually just so you, and Google Docs on your um, 
So you literally will just tap away, like be on the train and you'll knock yes. out? Yes. And then you can also then pick up wherever on other devices, on your iPads or laptops or wherever, wherever you are. And I love going to the local library, yeah. which is fantastic. Oh, we right. I uh, live near Birmingham. We've got a library in Worcester called the, called the Hive, which is just brilliant. And it's open it's because they have this wonderful idea of combining their town library with their university library. They, they've, they've got adequate budget to keep it open from 10 in the morning till 10 in the evening. Oh, oh gee, so you can go in there. If you ever see John in the library <laughs> texting or tweeting, he's not texting and tweeting. He's writing his book. Leave him alone. <laughs> it's, um, it's just, that's pretty really great. Cool. It's just it's a very nice um, environment. I'd love to do that, but like... Do you turn mm. your phone landscape then when you when you type in? Nope. Do you literally just sit there and that's mm. just so intriguing because I I could do a bit, but I'd feel like I need a, a keyboard. Like I feel like yeah, you're so pretty proficient. You with can the get thumbs. a keyboard with a phone, I suppose. Yeah. But, yeah, but um, wow, knocking out chapters good. written on a phone that's pretty cool. It is, and, and, and Google Docs is very good. It sort of adapts to the size of which Apple's pages doesn't, for example. It, yeah, it doesn't. Hoping, yeah. It's another half-hearted bit of <laughs> software of the company that's supposed to be bringing you services. <laughs> they need to get this sorted out. <laughs> Actually, before we get out of here, let's let's talk a little bit about what's happening in the world of tech. Have you heard about the FaceTime scandal with Apple? Or well, not really a scandal, but the 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 sort of gap oh, in their security. Well, the, yes. Hmm. Yeah, where basically you could FaceTime somebody, and if you added yourself into the FaceTime mm. uh, call again, it would just answer on the other end. Yes. So if I, mm. for example, called you, then added myself, Marcus Bronzy, to it, I'd hear you'd you pick up without that, you doing absolutely. anything at all. Yes, that was, it was a bit of a shock, shock that nobody discovered that, wasn't it, Ian? Yeah, I mean, mm. I always wonder how people figure these things out. Does somebody just... Is it just somebody sitting there going, I'm going to add myself to the conversation? And they're like, oh, hang on, it's happened. Or, you know. in, in that case, I suppose it is, yes. Yeah. Apart from, as opposed to the people who deliberately try and hack into things, which is, yeah. uh, which is, uh, which that was a, a, an interesting thing looking at last year. I mean, they went to one of those pen test companies where they actually try and penetrate bits of software. Yeah. When you put, we actually, when we got in there, they had a Tesla in bits all over the floor. What are they trying to do to it? Hack, it? hack it? Yes, absolutely. Because oh. that's not, well, it was the first car that's been really updatable over the air. I mean, so, you've got so auto that, driving as well. Uh, sort of, yes. Yeah, yeah mm. ish. Auto ish, ish driving, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Potential there for somebody to to get involved in. There's got there's going to be a film about that soon, surely, isn't there? Somebody in their car, they're trying to go to work. It's going to be like um, what was that classic? Oh, Ooh. Billy won't remember it. I'm trying to remember the film where they have to hijack a coach or a bus. Is it Speed? Speed. It is Speed. Speed. That's yes, it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, it's going to be like Speed, but instead you get in your car and you're on your way to work, and somebody hijacks it. Yes. yes. Well, that could even, that could all happen now, of course. Oh, yeah. I think because I mean even with the existing um, every car's got a SIM card in it hasn't it now yeah. every new one anyway yeah. and uh, yeah mm. grim that pretty yes. good uh, but thank you very much for coming on the show though, oh. John I appreciate you killing some time with us um it was great talking about what you could tell us about the gadget show. Yes, uh, I know, yes, it's because they, have, they haven't decided what they're doing yet. Is it, that, that. That's good, but that's always, it's always good, isn't it? To wait till the last minute. I think it's just it's what's keeping things fresh because I think the old the old model of TV you could shoot something now that would go out, mm. and, and by the way, now is is February that could go out in July. Like that could be mm. a reasonable turnaround for TV. But with the world of of gadgets and tech, things are just moving faster and faster. So you know mm. the fact that sometimes things kind of come together a few days before the shoot I think it's or are great. they or are they oh. or are they moving faster or is I it feel like they are do you, do you not feel so I don't know I'm not so sure I, I, I just I, I, I started when you think of all the, all the inventions of the 20th century you know, the, the mass car industry the jumbo jet radio or whatever I mean they think, you just think of all those things versus yeah. what's, going, what's happening at the moment. I, mean, I, I mean it's almost now the social aspects and the of, of technology is, is, is more where the concern is isn't it than, yeah. than the actual hardware in a sense I mean, we're probably plateauing a bit with the old uh, you know what you're right some areas are really moving forward some mm. areas are actually going backwards like with regards to travel mm. and this is this is excluding Hyperloop and Hyperloop 1 because mm. it's not out yet it's not ready yet mm. we've actually gone backwards because no, there's no Concorde now is there and, and that was well, there the is that, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. I know it might be coming back and stuff but we've actually become a bit slower when it comes mm. to kind of transatlantic travel which is quite interesting when loads of other things have kind of shot forward one thing that we're really um uh, found interesting is is drones and aerial photography. That's oh, well, that, kind of ridiculous. That is amazing. Yeah. Isn't it? The, the opportunities of drones now, but you have to be good at it. I think too. you have to be good yeah. with your drone and safe. Sure otherwise, you will shut down airports <laughs> for forty eight hours. Even though a drone battery life is only twenty minutes, don't know how that works out. But okay, I was supposed to be going on my, my drone course for an item, <laughs> and it's not happened yet. That's something that they ought to do. I should be lobbying them about that. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. today John's going to be at Heathrow Airport flying a drone. Yeah. Um, uh, also gimbal based photography as well so we actually just got our hands on the DJI Osmo Pocket ah, which is like a really yes. small form factor gimbal 
Uh, it's kind of like they've got a drone chopped off the gimbal and giving you a little battery pack on it. Yes. And that is really impressive. Like considering what you would need to get the same visual effect of kind of smooth camera transitions and pans and stuff before, uh, that's really an impressive place. But I think you've made a really valid point that some areas of technology have kind of like really, we've seen a real increase in, in, in development and change. And other areas like travel, just yeah, it's kind of gone backwards a little bit, really. Mm. Interesting. Hmm. Oh, we, got, yeah, no, no, we, got, we can't end on that note. It's <laughs> 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 <That was> terrible. <laughs> it's great. 2019 oh, is going to be fantastic. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> 2019 is going to be great. Um, yes. Uh, any apps that you've been kind of getting into on your phone there? Anything new that you've picked up recently? Hmm. We always like to share a, a new app if one a has new been picked app. up. Oh, God, or or one know. that you just found that's pretty handy or a bit of fun. What do I use on yeah, right? you can I have, have a little look. Why is well, it, to be honest, we should what, be asking guests I've what got the last app they've used is. What's I, the last app that you've used? I, I mean, the one that surprises me that I use a lot is Apple's News app. Um, really? And I didn't, in some ways, the packaging. I mean, even though there's a lot, quite a lot of holes in it when you start looking in detail, it's just I, I find it a lot. There's a lot of go to that. Um, slightly disappointed by BBC Sounds. <laughs> Uh, mainly because it doesn't work in the car yet, and also because it doesn't tell you any details about what's on now. It's it's very strange. It's, it's very, very interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you some some questions, and I'll, I'll, and this 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 could be quite enlightening. So, Ooh. were you a fan of the Radio Eye player? Yes, I still use it all the time. Going to be discontinued. Well, eventually, yeah, they, eventually. they say they say eventually going to make the sounds as yeah. good as. And I, mean, I like the way it's integrating podcasts. And you, but I'm, yeah. so I'm interrupting your question. But no, 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 no. No. I like the way it's it's combining podcasts and live radio and the radio schedule together right. that's good uh, I but I, I find it very limited in what it can do but you're about to ask me something there. I was just going to ask what do you think it could do to, to make sure that you get all the best of, of what it's trying to bring to the table and still have all the essence of, of the radio iPlayer what do you think it, it needs to it just needs to have everything that's, that's in the iPlayer and all the other things I don't understand yeah. quite why it doesn't I mean presumably they haven't developed the car interface yet mm. they haven't um, they're going they do say they're going to yeah. um, why you don't get all the program information I don't know you seem to get it and, and I could be wrong because I haven't looked into it for the last week or two, but certainly when I looked last, it didn't tell you. It just gave you the headline of the programme without any details until the programme had finished and then all the details appeared. Why was that? Well, I'm, 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 I'm going to say I'm, I'm a little bit in the know, so I'm going to oh, say what I can. So yes. basically, uh, the metadata that you put in so like say when we upload a podcast we mm. upload the title uh the the, the show description and stuff when you do create new apps you have kind of new into new back ends that you kind of have to put in that data into so i think if it was an example if it was if they had the original iplay radio iplayer app and they kind of transitioned over to a sounds looking interface everyone could probably still keep you know, in this show, this happens and whatever. Uh, type that in or, or paste it in, and, and that would work. But I think with a new, a totally new app, there's going to be a different back end, and it's trying to integrate the old back end and the new back end and make them work so that they can have all the same information or transitioning over from one back end to another. That's what you do in theory. I'm not going to say it's happening, but it's all about it's, transitioning it's all back about ends. It's all about the transition. I have to look this up when I get home. Yes. Um, <laughs> just basically the, the, the website that you type in all the information into that, that gives you all the in info. It's mm. very interesting. So yeah, I mean, because that was, um, was a big push from the BBC for that app and I think they wanted it to do really big things, but I think it's been a very big learning experience with regards to making sure that you have keep your core audience happy whilst introducing new things so it'd be very interesting to see mm. how that goes i mean how do you feel about algorithmic tune selection and 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 music and and content selection are you a spotify user i'm a spotify a, user yes you feel um, a big fan of that i i like it yes yeah. i mean yes i tend to end up by searching for things i mean rather than necessarily s getting things from the algorithms uh, yeah i think do you kind of go for catalog stuff like oh i fancy listening to a bit of this and search for the artist or do you just search for genres and stuff i always so, like to know because i'm a bit of a i just look for an old album and go from there really i don't know was i uh not quite sure. Uh, probably everything really. I did. I, 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 I was probably quite interested. Tend to be interested in jazz. I tend to be interested in. I do. I, I like classical music as well. So I often tend to be. Tend the starting point tends to be a program usually. So I was like, they had a, they had the composer from La La Land on the movie Radio Three movie program on the side, which is whatever it is about music and cinema, sound of cinema or something. And and, uh, and they had him interviewed, so I went back to the law uh, to because he was using a lot of the Michel Legrand stuff, and and, and so I searched for that in Spotify the other week, and thing. Um, so that was so that was radio prompted. Mm -hmm. A lot, lot of his um, 
but it uh, but but it acts the the range actually the range of stuff can be quite limited once you get into some of those even on Spotify. Yeah, yeah. There's, they've not quite got everything. No, not quite. They've got, got, they've got a, a huge lot, amount of stuff. Loads yeah. of stuff. Yes, yeah. it's just fantastic. Yes, and um, I suppose I'd probably do. I tend to I tend to be radio driven. So okay. I, say I tend to look at, uh, even look at what's been on programs and. Yeah, that's quite good. Like you listen back. Yeah. What, so when you're like listening to radio and stuff, you kind of told us about the radio that you bring with you on your walks. To- <laughs> 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 Except when I'm with Mrs. Bentley, obviously I don't, yeah. don't we don't, I don't yeah. listen to the radio with my yeah. Mrs. Bentley or all the daughters. No, yeah, they're, they're, enough, they're, 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 they're um, do you use smart speakers and stuff? Are you like an Alexa user and stuff like that? Ah, uh, Mrs. Bentley's banned Alexa. She thinks she's spying on us, and she might wow. be. Wow! So uh, yes, so Mrs. Bentley, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, we've got an Alexa was, free she zone. Was, she, was, she was an enthusiastic Alexa user, mainly as a radio in it, yeah. initially. So. I, I met a girl called Alexa the other day, and <laughs> I thought sorry for her. As soon as she introduced us, I was like, "What's your name?" She's like, "Alexa." I was like. I'm going to apologise now because once I tell my mates that your name's Alexa, you're going to be asked to do stuff all night long. Like, Alexa, get me a drink. <laughs> Alexa, open the door. Um, yes, and you can't change it, can you? I don't, yeah, I think, I don't that, think you can. I think there, I, might be an alternative, there might be an alternative signal for it, right? I think right. you can say something. I can't remember what it is, but there's like another name you can use or you can because they've thought about it because there are people called Alexa out there but mm. I think it's great I think cheers cheers Amazon you got, got got us in Alexa's head all night long she hated it and you could tell as soon as she introduced herself she was thinking don't do it guys don't do it guys and I was like right <laughs> Alexa <laughs> um, so you got a, a smart speaker free home then well, it's, it's, yeah. in, it's in there but it's, it's, it's in there but it's largely off, off. Oh, yes. wow yes. okay and what about the kids and daughters are they are they largely into tech as well or uh, cars I think stuff? so uh, well they took yes one's, uh, one well they're certainly in they use their phones very intensively and laptops yeah. intensively. They're, they're not particularly... They, they, they both value laptops, strangely, in the in world of tablets. They're, they're very keen on, yeah. uh, still on that tradition. Uh, mm, I think so. They don't do a lot of photography. They, they like driving, but, uh, but mainly in terms of getting there, being independent. <laughs> but I mean, they're, they're, they're not into the... They don't, they don't fall into the category of... Pe- people who don't like cars are very keen often to say, young people these days not interested in cars, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah they yeah, like yeah. driving. But actually, they're, I think they both really value the independence that uh, cool. driving about brings. Mm. And how about the, the, the techie side of you? Do you feel like that's rubbed off on them at all? Do you feel like they're, they're, quite, they're quite into tech or, or, or not so much? No, no, I get asked questions to do. I have to remember to back up all their things and, 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 and um, okay, so you'll and remind them about... Okay. Uh, 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 yes. So uh, your daddy cloud storage, your daddy up, update your firmware, your, you yes, know, your dad, yeah. this isn't working, how do I do it kind of thing. Still. And they're 21 and 23. <laughs> never going to end <laughs> so you're going to be getting it all the time mate um, mm. right I think that's a nice way to end the show I'm happy mm. with that instead of good we'll be tired us <laughs> yes. technology is going to kill us yes. uh, now once again thank you for having us on the show um, where can we find you on social media please tell our listeners oh I've got, I've got I, I, I'm, I'm not very uh, prolific I've got I've, I've got an, an Instagram thing at John Bentley 90 and, and Twitter and uh, yeah and uh, what do you prefer it. to you do you like a little tweet or a little Instagram where are you at um I quite, I, I quite like, and I, uh, probably originally more. I quite like the discipline of Twitter, keeping yourself short. Yeah, I tend to ramble on too much. So, so that, so it was a, but uh, it's a bit, it's a bit, a, a bit of that. Okay, yes. cool. Mm. Yeah, we'll check out John on, on Twitter, Twitter and Instagram, and also on the latest season of the Gadget Show, which in 2019. When are we going to be looking forward to? Early April. Early April, we're going to be able to mm. see it. Uh, it's a great show. I can't wait to to see what you get up to, and also uh, Craig learning another language. Oh, that's going to be hilarious. Craig learning another Good. language. That's going to be very interesting. Uh, I can't wait to see the look on the person's face when he tries to speak mm. whatever language he's learning to them. <laughs> look of uh, uh, of confusion. But um, yeah, thank you very much for killing some time with us. Uh, I've been Marcus Bronzy and I'm John Bentley yeah uh, plenty of ways to kill some time out there thank you for killing some time with us